What's going on, everyone? We're back with another special guest. We're again here in Dayton, Ohio, and I got my guy Prana all the way from Amazing. How you doing, brother? What's up, brother? Pleasure you to be here. You pulled up by surprise, man. <laughs> Gee, I'm telling you, you did not tell me this guy was coming out here. But I got to for the culture, man. I knew. I'm excited you're here. What I saw you was like, because you pulled up in the lobby and you had a, a hat on, like and glasses, and looking I was all like, musty. I was like, who, who is this guy? <laughs> and you turn around, I'm like, no way, has Prana, bro. So I'm happy you're here. You're always supporting us, which we appreciate. Um. You've done a podcast with G before mm-hmm. on this show. So I don't want to do like a podcast where we talk about your life and everything. Because yeah. I think we kind of covered some of that. I want to more so dive in. I told you before. Just like, let's talk about what we're doing. Yeah. Talk about what we're building. Maybe some successes, some failures. And like, be a little bit real if you're open to some certain things, obviously. And just like, because I think a lot of people are looking up. Especially to you. As young, how old are you again? 24. Yeah, so this is a young <laughs> man right here, man. A young man building a great like global media brand, basically. Um, before I go any further, for those who don't know, though. Give me like a quick little pitch on Amazing and what you're actually building there. Yeah. Um, so I started Amazing HQ back in December 2019. You know, when I was, you know, back in college, after I finished up my football career, um, you know, really started by picking up a camera and showing it up to people's games. It's grown as a platform since then. And, you know, now we're really trying to kind of be able to, you know, be that voice, you know, for, you know, the Asian community here in North America, eventually, you know, overseas as well. Really to show one that, you know, you know, being Asian can be a superpower. It doesn't have to be a detriment in sports. And, you know, to really give more opportunities for a community that deserves it and a community that has the talent for it. Agreed. You know, I love what you're doing. You guys have grown a lot in the last, I would say, like year and a half too. Mm-hmm. Like it's really exploded. I'm going to dive right into it. Yeah. What do you think has been like some of the successes you've seen that have allowed you guys to grow so fast recently? Yeah. I mean, I think successes come from the amount of like exploration that we've done or like the amount of investment that we've done and just going to so many different types of events like Agreed. you know the yeah. i think you know before this i was also working a full-time job so i was definitely limited in what my capacity of travel and things like that right. were but you know since then i think it's been able to um i think one it's like you know we're seeing this asian wave across media so i think that helps a lot too that people care about it more people outside the asian community care about it too yeah. um it's it's finally cool to be Asian, even though that's not that's not something that we're you know we're pushing it because we, we already know that. Um, but you know those stories are being more accepted now. But also we're seeing so much success, more success that that we're seeing an Asian wave not just in Hollywood but also seeing it in sports. Um, so I think it's that, but also you know our ability to do not not just you know have an impact in you know where we were based in California, but also you know having impact across you know across the states. You know also recently in Canada yeah. and then yep. you know. Most recently, like in, in Southeast Asia as well. Yeah. Like I said, amazing things you guys. And feel free to question me if you want to. I, I'm not trying to grill you. I just want people to be able to learn from this. Um, you've done a lot in the last, I was even to say just six months, mm-hmm. right? What are some of the things you guys are trying to key in on uh, or the next steps for the brand, basically? Because you've done the events. You know, you've done some some really cool things. Why don't we talk about the event first you guys recently just had? Yeah. So we hosted um, two, two, two all-star showcases. It's called the Amazing All-Star West Showcase and the Amazing All-Star East Showcase. We hosted one in LA and one in Toronto. Um, really, it was kind of like the way we saw it, it was like, oh, it's our version of the McDonald's All-American game, but for the yeah, Asian community. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so we were able to bring, the be- bring together the best um, Asian high school, you know, senior basketball hoopers from across, you know, the US and Canada. Okay, okay. Yep. And really, it was, it, for me, it was like, you know, one of my most, one of my favorite experiences, but also the most stressful experience of my life, being able to see people, you know, from thousands of miles away come, you know, come, come together, really, right? And be like, not just be celebrated, but also be in a space where they're challenged by people that look like them. And that is something that is very rare. That is something like they don't have to have the isolation feeling anymore. Right. So I think that was something that was very special. You know, we were able to have like, you know, people like, you know, Cam Bynum from the Minnesota Vikings, you know, Kiana Smith, the first Korean American in WNBA history, be able to be out there and be, you know, judge part, judge, you know, contest um, or contest judge as well as like, you know, coaches. Yeah. And overall, it's just like, you know, it's crazy to see that something that I built so long ago or not so long, so such so like recently. Yeah. As you know, someone who just finished playing football myself. Right. <laughs> and, and kind of seeing the opportunities that I've been able to have, of like meeting my own idols and, you know, you even see some on the court today with like, you know, Goku is someone I look up to growing right. up and now… It's awesome to see Goku sharing the court with another of my biggest idols, Jeremy Lin, you know, back yeah, when he was it's in incredible, Taiwan. right? Yeah. I think like seeing those things come to life is like, it's, it's amazing. S- sticking with the event for a second, what were the hardest things you faced? I, like I've done yeah. events too. 
And you said stressful, right? And that's the thing what I thought about too. Like you, people don't know the, the behind the scenes stuff yeah. or the issues you face. It just maybe you can't say everything, but what are some of the things you like challenges you faced when putting this event together? I think a lot of it comes from just like inexperience. I have I, I always tell people this before we hosted our first showcase last year. I've never hosted an event of any scale of any time in my life, not even in elementary school. <laughs> so I was never that type of person to put on events or be a be a leader, be like a super vocal person. Um, so in itself, obviously, that's going to be such a challenge. Right. Um, but I think it was definitely, you know, it was over this past year, I've had to learn so much about like everything outside of what my expertise was in terms of like, oh, I know I'm very well versed within this Asian you know, sporting community. I know how to do media. I don't know how to do business. I don't know how to build out a team. Right. I don't know how to put on events. I don't know how to do all that stuff. I don't know how to do taxes. Um, hey, no one knows how to do I, I still don't know how to do taxes. So don't worry. <laughs> so it's all of that. I think being able to, you know, like have real like, you know, big boy talks with sponsors yeah. and like how are we going to, you know, give deliverables to them. Um, and, you know, going through, going through that for the first time, I think that was, that was definitely a, a struggle and being able to, um, find sponsors that were willing to accommodate our like naivety. I think that was like important. Right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. First of all, I commend you for coming up here and just saying that you didn't, you don't know stuff yeah. or like you're learning. Cause like most people will like act like they know everything. So I appreciate that. Um, and it's nice that you're actually accepting of like, you're, you're a young entrepreneur, bro. you're like only 24. <laughs> like I said, like w even when I was building stuff within the lab, like there's not a really a blueprint in my mind mm -hmm. of like what we're doing, especially cause the space is so unique. Right. Like you're technically building a niche brand, right? Like, it's for Asians. It's not like technically for the whole world. Even though they can enjoy it, mm -hmm. you're targeting more niche markets. So like, that's not really something that's been done before. Right. So every, And like the events, like you're learning how to do that. You're expanding, which is great for you. I can't imagine a couple of years from now, like what they'll look like and how they'll evolve. Yeah. Um, as you keep growing, what would you say right now are the pillars of the brand? Mm -hmm. is, it the, is content number one, I'm assuming? I, I'd say content is like the entryway. Okay. As, yep. as always, like, I think we kind of see it in similar to the context of like how Overtime did it, not in the, not in the necessarily the delivery of how they did it, but, you know, they built, they started, you know, in 2016, built a, you know, a social media brand. Mm -hmm. It was literally, they, through original content, they showed up at people's games, like similar to how we've done, um, you know, people who should have been stars, but they just weren't heard of, right? So, and they yeah. made them into, you know, heroes for the for the basketball community or whatever sport they were covering um and from there they've been able to branch off and do other things like you know create their own like you know multi-million dollar um you know apparel brand that's based on identity right right um being able to you know create their own league that has just produced you know two nba draft lottery yeah. prospects so they've obviously we don't, we don't want to do those same things but the idea of being able to build an audience so that we can um use a captivated audience to be able to do stuff that actually has more even more tangible impact. Like yeah. we know so much, so much change or so much narrative change can be done through media, but how much more can be done when you're actually like, you know, creating the opportunities for the athletes, whether that's, you exactly. know, putting on events with, you know, scouts in the scouts in the building, whether it's like actually creating the programs at the youth level level so we can foster the talent in ways that you can counter systemic, you know, systemic issues when it comes to Asian American opportunity in, in sports. So things like that, yeah. I think is more of like the, the forward thinking way of like building the media outlet first so that we can do all those things. Yeah. I, I love how you're thinking about it. Um, with what you just said, right? Like what, I'm trying to think how the word is, what, what's actually the biggest challenge you've, you've, you face? Like if there's one, I'm sure there's many, yeah. but with building what you're building, like, is there like a challenge that's always at the top of your mind that you know you have to overcome? I think from a personal standpoint, it's just more so just like having some level of organization in my life because I have none of that. <laughs> And as I keep on progressing with this you journey, it. it gets worse and worse. Or yeah. it's like the need for it is more and more. Yeah. So you realize the the lack of it more. Um, and especially as like, you know, I have to like build out a team and we have to like, you know, um, expand in a more, you know, structured way rather than it's just me doing everything and things it's like that. It's different when it's just you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like if it's me just doing it and and things things go bad, then it's just… I'm the only one who can feel anything. I don't have to like, no one else is going to care. Yeah. Which is like, that at least gives you a peace of mind that not not other people are being affected. But, yeah. you know, when you build out a team, it's obviously different. So I think that has been, you know, something um, I've had to like, kind of like start to like figure out how to actually do better, structure my time better, especially like when I'm traveling so much and there is no structure in my schedule. Right. What What is the current structure of your guys' team? Like yeah. how many people are on the team? 
So for officially it's three right now. Uh, so we have a chief creative officer with me, and then we have Joey. I'm sure you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, Joey. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's he, cool. He's he's like CMO. He does a lot of the. Uh, he you know he helps with a lot of the brand partners sides. He's helping out with their investment stuff as well. Um, but. But yeah, it's interesting because it's like, you know, obviously I'm 24 and, you know, Joey's not 24. He's, he's like not. 30. Yeah, and yeah. Then, you know, our, other, our other partner is like 37, 38. Yeah, that's so good it's like it's, a, it's cool. But it's like also like a, I have to like learn how to, you know, like not feel that also not feel like a impos- that imposter syndrome when yeah. I'm having conversations with people that are, you know, every day I'm obviously having conversations with people that are much older than me, right? So of course. it's like and have much more experience in other, other expertises, right? So I yeah. think learning how to how to like not ever like sell like not ever like prove to someone that I'm like you know like or like show off like something that is not true but like just trying to be genuine and being able to like I'll be like super super honest about like oh what I don't know and what I do know so that I can so that we can because I'm I think everyone understands like oh He's 24. He, he yeah. doesn't have. He shouldn't know. You shouldn't have to know everything, yeah. and that's why you have an older guys with you, so they can like give you that knowledge, right? Because, exactly. like I said, by the time you're 30, bro, you'll be in a good <laughs> spot because you got six more years to learn like every single thing about this, yeah. right? What's the most exciting thing about this journey for you? Because yeah, you, yeah. you kind of mentioned something before, right? It's yes. the same thing I've we feel with this. Even just seeing the guys here, it's yeah. like you start something, yeah. So you know it's like yours. It's yeah. like your baby, and you see it grow year by year. You see people come together for the events. You see, you, you're having like, you're going on stages, you're giving talks, you're having interviews. Like people are really recognizing you, getting your own shows. <laughs> like how does it actually feel though, like to see some of that stuff start to happen? Yeah, I think, um, I, I'm sure you can relate to this, but working in the digital, like digital media, social media, a lot of the gratification is hard to like actually understand like what it really is. Yeah. When you're just seeing you're like, oh, like this person like, or this post was liked a hundred thousand times or whatever. Yeah. Like, that is awesome, but it's, like, you can't physically see that. But when you, like, for example, like, you know, obviously, like, getting to meet, you know, my idols and them already knowing about the platform. Like, yeah. getting to, like, you know, like, you know, play in a basketball game with, like, Joe Sai yeah, and Simu Lu. And they already, like, being fans of Amazing Art HQ already, like, before, like when I went to went up to Joe Sai, I was like, hey, I just want to introduce myself. My name is Pranav. I run this media outlet called Amazing HQ. And he's like, it's like, oh, yeah, like, me and my son, we watch that stuff all the time. It's like, hearing that stuff, like, from someone of that type of about. like, why would he be watching this stuff? Like, he has so many other things yeah. to do. But I think um, more important is just like, I think like being able to just like hear like how much like in person specifically how much like some of this stuff means to people. And even like when I was just in the Philippines last month, hearing how many people like knew what knew like came up to me and like knew what Amazing HQ was um, in it place that's like you know 15 hour plane ride away far away yeah it's crazy right i feel like you never really you can never really understand that mm-hmm. even when you're in there i feel like it feels surreal right yeah like hearing that in person it's like wait philippines <laughs> like you know about us like i'm sure there's people in india china probably literally all over the world that are following you guys yeah and it's just like it's what makes the journey so much fun right let's talk about the social side for a little bit um digital social media is wild yeah. you know this we know this every day's new apps threads just came out there's always something new coming out something to be on top of and learning how to mm. how do you take advantage of it right contents you're you're the you guys are king of content that's your bread and butter right what are some tips you have for anyone listening right now to grow themselves by using content yeah um i think um let me say i say like obviously why you know our brands have been able to be successful is largely because of how social media operates today in the sense that social media favors, you know, highly niche content. Mm-hmm. It creates those algorithms that allows, you know, like those communities that, you know, were starved of that content for so many years because those platforms didn't really exist. To be able to finally like, actually like see that content and also create it themselves. Right. So I think that's like where you see the most potential in terms of like, oh, like you can just be yourself. Like, oh, like, you know, I get, I get to see so many, like if I just pull up TikTok, you know, a lot of my For You pages, is just like random, like, you know, thumbel people, you know, saying <laughs> yeah. random things that like I would send to my mom and then she would laugh with, like, she, even though she does nothing about TikTok. So it's like things like that. It's like I would have never expected to like see some. I would think that those experiences are so specific to me, but you realize they're not. In right. the same sense, like, you know, a lot of what we're doing, it's like, oh, like, like as an athlete, we were very isolated in this experience and we thought there were no other athletes doing it. But when you realize through social platforms that there are actually so many, yeah. so many people doing it, that's why you can, you know, create things like that. So I think 
it's really about, you know, finding your niche, you know, building out your niche and like, you know, slowly, if you want to expand your niche, like slowly grow from there, but test the waters like one at a time. And also like, you know, see also, it's always like, like, what is it? Imitation is the, what is oh, the uh, biggest form of flattery biggest or form something? Of flattery. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's especially true in yep. the form of social media. I know it's like, I just, I was at the Asian American Journalist uh, uh, Association conference in DC right before this. And we, uh, the, the panel that I was on was about like how to keep up with all the new waves in social media. And a lot of, you know, my inspiration for what I do comes from, you know, my own past work with, with ESPN and seeing like what Omar Raja like did as a pioneer of sports right. and how like every step of the way, he's just like, he, he is just testing out new methods and finding what works and then everyone else around him follows and that's how they find success. Yeah. So being able to like see who does it best at top and not necessarily copying them, but copying maybe like those formats that they use. Yeah, exactly. Have you ever read the book Steal Like an Artist? I've not. Have you heard of that book though? No. It's basically the exact same. It's like a pretty famous book about stealing like an artist. Like okay. everything that we've done in life, it's already been done. Uh -huh. Even if you, tomorrow you make up something new, it's probably already been done. We're literally just stealing it, twisting it into our own form right. to make it like our own, right? Because that's yeah. like, that's all social media is these days, right? It's almost the same stories. It's the same thing, but you're twisting something small to try to make yeah. it your own, which is kind of funny actually. Yeah. Um, something that I commend you for too is like, you said your content at, at the beginning of this, you would go out to a lot of players. Mm -hmm. I would, I don't know if it was just you or you had hired people, but you were all over the place. Yeah. Like you would actually go there and like your content was so high quality. And for me, that was something that's so important because as I was scrolling, I'm stopping. You know this already. Like if it's high quality, higher chance someone's stopping and watch. Yeah. And you're also interacting with the athlete in person. It's not mm -hmm. like over Zoom or something like that. When you were doing all those trips and like creating that content, like what, what was going through your mind at that time? Did you just know that that was the right thing or you were just taking a risk to see what happened? Um... Well, when I started it, it was really just like a passion project because I was, you know, I had one semester left of college. I had the opportunity to kind of just like do whatever I want for a little bit. Yeah. Um, but then from there, I saw like more of a need for it. And I think part of the reason I do it, I, it's so much like original content. is like, first of all, that, that content doesn't exist. Like these people aren't covering these athletes. Like, They're not. You know, that's the reason why we created this platform. Yeah. So to be able to, to show in original ways that oh, we have success in this community. Um, obviously that's like one, you know, one aspect of it. Um, it's also like, you know, creating those relationships with the athletes is really important to me. Like, obviously like, you know, a lot of the people on the court today have had relationships with since like, um, you know, like even as early, like AJ I've known since like, like yeah, high, school. Me, like high school. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. And a bunch of those dudes like Vroon, you know, I knew, I know, I knew him since high school too. Like he's, you know, he's, he's super close with like my cousins it's crazy. and, um, and then, you know, the other is, like, I actually, like, interviewed for a story before I created Amazing HQ. Like, you know, Sai, you know, Rune Kiri. Yep, yep. I got to interview all of them back in, like, 2019. And that was actually my inspiration piece for creating Amazing HQ. So That's it's, like, crazy. Being able to, like, <laughs> um, I think it's, like, you know, when, you, when you're in a circle like this that is very, like, tight-knit, um, there's so much shared experience, so much relatable experience that it's, like, no matter where, like, you know, Sai is from Arizona or, like, wherever these people are from, um, you can all come together and, you know, be able to form those relationships. I love it, dude. Yeah. Um, with the business, right? We don't have to give away everything. If you don't want to answer something, that's fine. Um, cause I'm definitely grilling you right now, but I hope, I hope people watching at home are like <laughs> getting some inspiration, seeing what you're doing. Cause everyone's trying to build digital brands in my opinion right now. Yeah. Um, you gave, you talked about some content, some keys there. The other pillars, obviously I think you guys have tried it too. It's a little trickier one. It's apparel. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have more plans to kind of keep going with that too? Yeah. So I think that's something that, ha that has to, I have to put a lot more brainstorming to that. I think the way, the way I have it now, it kind of like, I've, I, I've marketed as little as I can. Yeah. Because I don't have the bandwidth to actually ship out yeah, it's, items. It's a whole, it's a whole different thing. Yeah. A whole different business basically. Yeah. yeah. So from that, from that standpoint, like that's like something we need to approach when we have more bandwidth, when we yeah. have more team bandwidth. Yeah. Um, Cause like, to be honest, like if you go into my room, ask for all the merches, like in my yeah, yeah. in my bedroom. I know how it is, bro. <laughs> and that's the best part too. It's just stacked up, and you're gonna ship one by one. Yeah, because you're literally on the grind. And it's the most like inefficient way possible. And it's like I think that's another thing too. It's like figuring out like what what works and what works efficiently. I think that's like something that you have to figure out pretty quickly before you just like everything becomes a time sink. Exactly. I think the good thing too is that you guys are still like you say it's 2019. You're also only 24, so like there's. Yeah. Hopefully you feel this way, but there's a lot of room for you to experiment. Yeah. You can test stuff out. If it fails, that's great because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. No one's probably going to even know it failed. Mm -hmm. You can move on to something else, right? Yeah. 
but sticking with that, has there been anything that you that you've tried that has failed? That has failed. Anything with the brand or something that's like didn't pan out how you wanted it to pan out, maybe? Honestly, good. Um, I wouldn't say like has failed. No. Um, I say this has to go back to like a bandwidth issue. But okay, okay. Well, well, one thing I would like to say first, I had a from a from a content perspective. I'm sure like you can relate to this. Always have everything backed up. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it's very important. So, <laughs> like, I, I know I've talked to Gotham about this, but like, even like you know, I had so much stuff from like last year's India Rising thing. Yeah. But you know, like a few, I think the month after, like, I had my whole hard drive corrupt, and but that had stuff from 2020 all the way back oh, to 2020. Dude. So that was like, and that was like right at the time I was le- I left like I. It, it it corrupted right after I put in my two weeks notice at my at ESPN, and I was like, "Oh my god!" No way. <laughs> so it, it's things like that that's like, okay, you have to be prepared for the worst at all times, and always like make sure like you're you're ready for that. Yep. Um, but I think back to like the organizational aspect. I think from a long we have we've had like I've I've filmed like you know several different like you know short form documentaries on different athletes that we haven't even. I haven't even got to editing yet. Some have been like, you know, filmed back in like 2021. Right. Um, and there's, I think there's so much like potential in telling these stories in long form ways. And I would have liked to like push out, you know, some of those stories earlier, you know, make it into, you know, tie sponsors into them, make right. it a more right. like fleshed out thing. But just like with how everything, nothing ever stops with like what we're doing. There's no time to really like focus, you know, lo- hunker down and focus on something that's so like, you know, large yeah um yeah those are big projects think, man. Yeah. they take a lot of time and i'm sure like yeah like especially like i'm sure with you guys like when those freaking like 50 50 minute ten thousand hour episodes that were like edited yeah, every second was edited yeah i'm, I'm sure like that 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 it's, you it's, understand the time that, it, that yeah we understand through. that so speaking of this because a lot of people watching this are content creators are young what are you doing now so you have a corrupt hard drive what's what's been the solution for you now like Ooh. oh yeah so well, that I, I send that to like multiple. They, that yeah. that specific hard drive was never able to be okay. recovered, like or like meaningful stuff from it. <laughs> but now what I do is I have like multiple hard drives. I have like one that's like I forgot. There's like the mechanical one. I have the also like the SSD like you have, one. You have the desktop one too. Yes, I have that yeah, one too. So I have a big okay, one. But go. then I also have now I also have like Sync.com. It's like a cloud storage. I was gonna ask you what cloud storage you're yeah, using because yeah. I feel like that's the main thing now is you gotta have a cloud. But it's so slow. That's a, that's the tough part. It's yeah. like to, try try a box. Try box. Try box is really okay. good. Okay. Something else I want to ask you about is because you you guys are a small team, right? You're growing. You're probably outsourcing a lot of stuff, designers, whatever, whatever it could be. I don't know social media, whatever, all that stuff. I right? wish. You know, <laughs> you know, you wish. So there's actually. Have you ever thought about like outsource? Have you ever thought about like so for video editors and designers? Yes. Something I started doing recently is outsourcing. Yeah, yeah. It's a bunch of really dope companies and designers, and it's like fractional editing or fractional designers. Yeah. So I used to pay candidly. I used to pay a designer like two thousand twenty five hundred a month. Now my designer is 500 a month. Mm-hmm. They knock out as many designs as you want per month. They're based in the Philippines and they're nasty. <laughs> right? Same with my video editing. I have a fractional video editor. Yeah. I get four hours a day, whatever amount, amount a month, but it works out to 20 bucks an hour. And mm-hmm. same thing. It's like quick turnarounds. They're better than video editors I've seen locally. And it allows me and our team to free up more time. Yeah. The reason I'm telling you that is I'm just curious if you've thought about that yes. or, or yeah, explored yeah. that yet. Yeah. I've definitely thought about that and that's something we definitely have to do. Um, that... I think to get to that point, I have to be like super well versed in our operations of like, oh, this is exactly, you know, the method that we wanted, the style that we wanted, yeah. the flow that we wanted, be able to have those like style guides and things like that. Because um, I know like what has always been my base fear, like when bringing people onto the team is that because of, because of like, until unless it's unless everything is super structured from our our own end yeah then it internally. would just be more work from you know with within our own team right it yeah. would just like require us to be like you know teaching everyone how to do everything so i think that comes just more from like we have to be super prepared before we can like actually do that but we've done we've done some of that and we've had like um like right now we have like um like a like a content editor that's been you know working with us on like a on a like on a freelance basis and things like that right but I know from from like a when we have a budget like a one of our one of our hopes is like to be able to have like content creators in so many different regions right be able to like outsource a lot of that to them right. so um, so they obviously like another thing is like trust because like I'm sure you can understand like when you have a baby this is like this is yeah. my baby it's this is lot. the only like yep. thing that I've cared about this much in my life right 
Um, so I'm very protective of it, but like in a way that is like, I don't want, like, obviously, you know, you know, pe we've had conversations with people that like understand like, oh, there's so much of a market for this. I want to get involved. But they see it solely from that perspective of, oh, there's a market fit. How can I financially gain from it? Where yeah. I was always, I was always, and I always will be like, oh, it's all about the mission first. And it's about how can we, you know, create the platform that we didn't have when we were growing up. And I never want, no matter how big this ever gets, no matter how much ever, you know, money gets involved in it, it's always, that mission always has to stay yeah. the same. And that's like what I'm, what I get very scared of when I bring on new people. Yeah, and, and so I'm happy you said that because you're right about it. And I'm happy that you're staying true to that. Because if you don't, it's, it all, you know, that it'll all crumble down fast. And there is going to be people that come at you or come to you. I'm sure they already oh, it's, have. It's happened. It's already happened. <laughs> yeah, I know because we've experienced the same thing and they're going to want to change everything. Yeah. And if you're not strong or if that number looks too big for you, things will change. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it'll happen fast. But I'm happy that you're, you know, you have the right head on your shoulders. Yeah. Basically. A um, couple more quick things because I know we've been going for a while here. Just so, so, so people can learn maybe hopefully from you. Are you using any like content management tools, social media schedulers, like Notion, Slack? Are you, are you using any of those tools or no? I'm a, I'm a, I'm definitely going to start using that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. That's good. You guys are still small, so you're still growing. Yes. Yes. Um, that's more of a personal issue. Like that's, that's just like me and my own organizational right. flaws. Um, <laughs> that's just so, being a young entrepreneur. That's all it is, bro. <laughs> I'm actually going to have my girlfriend help me out with that. There like, you go. She's going to, she's going to help set me up and organize my whole schedule. Um, cause I definitely need that. I definitely need that. Cause it, it gets overwhelming. And then you realize there's so many people you haven't responded to. And then, yep. and then it just like eats at your mind. Like you wake up in the morning, you sleep at night. And it's, that's like what you're thinking about. Have you ever um, heard of time blocking? You should look up, it? you should look up time blocking. It's basically like the long story short, it's, it's like waking up in the morning and, and you're blocking out time in your day. To to, so you, you basically make a list of most important to least important. Yeah. And you, and you knock those out in, in certain increments and you can't go past those increments. Right. But also it's tough because like, that means you got to put your phone on D and D. Yeah. It means you know, your phone's on the side, which is tough, especially being young. I yeah. know like, your phone's probably blowing up all the time. <laughs> and it's like, just how do you find that time to focus? Because I feel like as you get older, you're, it's only going to get bigger. Right. And that would be my piece of advice is like, how do you like lock in for more mm -hmm. so that those five, six hours in the morning, you're completely focused and the rest of the day, you're like just chilling out basically. Right. You know what I mean? That comes with time. Yeah. And that also comes with like being able to like, I think the aspect of traveling and always like having like, oh, like you don't know if your morning's going to be free. You don't know if your e evening's going to be free yeah. depending on the day. And then you don't know like what travel will do to your body. I ask, that's the part that like that screws with my yeah. mind the most. There's so many things that can affect you that no one thinks about. Yeah. And it's tough because like, you, I don't know how you feel about it, but I feel like we always have to be ready. Yeah. And we always have to be on the go. Yeah. Like even here, like people know you. If you were, and didn't know you, you'd be fine. But like they know you. So they know like amazing's here. Yeah. So they're going to come up to you or they're going to see you or they're going to expect something from you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like we always have to be kind of like ready. Yeah. And that's also draining. Yeah. I don't know if you feel that way or not, but it's yeah. like, it's, but it's also fun. It's mm -hmm. also part of what we're doing, right? Because people recognize. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. um, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I could keep grilling you because I have so many more questions, but I'm going to like stop. Yeah. Maybe we'll do this again in the future. Can I see, can uh, I see some questions? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love that. <laughs> we'll, flip it. we'll flip it back to you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so I'll be the interviewer now. So I, I know, I know Gautam, um, he always like kind of roasts you about how like you were never like involved in like, you know, in Brown stuff before, right? Yeah. So I want to yeah, hear dude. about how your experience through India Rising has kind of shifted your perspective on the whole, you know, you know, South Asian culture, Indian yeah, culture, and your, I think, your own like relation to that. I think I've, and I've said this on a podcast before, like I, I was always more like in the, in the, in the closet more so per se. Cause like when I grew up, it wasn't like cool to, it just wasn't cool to be Brown. My friend group where I lived in Edmonton, like it wasn't cool to be that. So I felt like I shied away from that. Um, but luckily my parents did keep me around the culture, like all that stuff. I used to do the the celebrations, the pujas, go to the Mandir, pray. All, I still do that to this day. But it was always like closeted for some reason. I never understood that. I remember telling him one time, I was like, hey man, like, you know, my friends used to come over and uh, we have a prayer room. I don't know if you guys have like a prayer room or anything like that, but I used to close it. Because like I was like, oh, I don't want my friends to see this. I think it's like weird. And I, and I started thinking, like, why would I, why was I doing that? But it's because I grew up differently. Now that I've, like, come into this, since I've been, like, 21 plus, I've, like, really owned, like, who I am, to be honest. Like, being brown, like, I've been proud to be, like, a brown entrepreneur, like, building the lab. Like, for me, like, it really clicked for me when people used to tell me, like, yo, like, I didn't know there was a brown guy, like, yeah. behind the lab. And I was like, 
Oh, that's like I, I used to talk about that with my friends too. See, uh, see, yeah, see, that's to me like that's like humbling because like, oh, that's I didn't know people saw that. Yeah. Like, I didn't know you were behind the scenes. I thought it was just Dev. I'm like, they're like, that's inspirational in me. I'm like, oh, that's really cool. And I started doing more stuff in the community back home. We had a big program. We did a lot of stuff with, with the community. Um, even before we started India Rising, when he first hit me up a couple years ago, like mm -hmm. I had in the lab India already. Like I was going out there with my guy Manal. Like we were like trying to grow that because I was like, man, there's like really a, a gap here. Yeah. But for me, I was so far removed from the culture. Yeah. I'm basically playing catch up every day. The thing with him is it's the opposite. Like he knows the culture inside out. He grew up there. He lived there. Worked for the NBA. Worked for NBA India. Like that's why I feel it's nice working with them because like we mesh together nicely. You know what I mean? We fit yeah. together. But like going back to your question, like every day, bro, that I wake up, I, it's the same. I feel like this is like my new baby, which is weird to say, but like it's like so passionate to like wake up and be like, yo, we're building brown ballers, just like how you're building amazing. It's like we're building this. So like hopefully one day if I'm blessed with a boy. Or a daughter, like they're gonna like have this, be like, yo, like dad built this platform and like my role model's now on it. Same with you, right? It's like mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. So and then seeing these guys come together, like last year was cool. Yeah. Um, but this year I feel like now there's we have coaches and everything said, like I'm actually sitting down and like seeing it. Yeah. It's like, oh damn, like not only is this cool, it's like we have 16 really good basketball players here, mm -hmm. whereas like no one knows these guys exist still. You know what I mean? That's yeah. what's so exciting to me. It's like even with what you're doing, it's like, we know it's powerful, but think about how many people don't know Don't yet. know that. That's, they just, that's, they that's don't know you, it. they don't know me, they don't yeah. know what we're building. It's like, that's what's exciting. Like, there's so much more for us to tap, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, I feel that. Also, what's your, uh, what's your favorite 10,000 hours episode? <sighs> that's deep, bro. <laughs> um, I'll probably say Back back to Zero. Back to Zero. Back to Zero is really good with Trev Dunbar. Trev, um, oh, yes. And honestly, like, probably after that would be just the China, all the, the, the couple China ones where he met ISO, like the ball handler and yeah. Winter and those guys, like, because the year after that, I went to China mm -hmm. um, and met those guys. So, like, when I went to the first time I met them, I was like, oh, this is like, yeah. It was like, I had like goosebumps. I was like, yo, because I was a fan of Dev first, right? And yeah. you know that. I was like, oh, these are the guys, like, from the video. I almost felt like a celebrity being next to him. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. How about you? What's your favorite? Yeah. So it's like, I mean, I have to give context first. So I felt like, I felt like this May was a super like full circle moment when you know you know with your help obviously you know Dev came out to our you know amazing All Star Showcase yep. and helped like train some of these people that looked up to him for so long. But for me, I've talked. I, I think I told. I don't know if you remember. I told you about this before. I told Dev too. But I wrote. I wrote my um, my yeah. college essay yeah. about ten thousand hours and how I saw like I saw I was inspired by Dev's ability to use film or use like video to inspire communities right mm -hmm. um and i wanted to do that and obviously that's like you know you see it in kind of like what i'm doing now exactly um and so being able to like meet him in like 2016 i like pro -Am, at san francisco pro am and then you know being able to have him actually come out to our event now that was like that was huge but for me i was inspired mostly by like you know the whole you know maddie and kyle wong those episodes of course like the first few episodes um, man you know, there are these yeah. like, you know, these little, you know, skinny Asian American kids that, you know, no one believed in that had yeah. aspirations to make it to the NBA. And that's like, I wasn't, I wasn't a basketball player, but I was a football player. And I saw myself in that. And I think that like made a huge difference, whether like, I'm sure Dev didn't know it at the time, but he knew it yeah, after he, he went didn't. to China and he yeah. saw all of that about how much like an impact that could have. So it's like, I think it's really cool, you know, being able to do this with you too. And like seeing, like I said, like, we when I when I found out that you were involved in within the lab, I used to talk all the time with my with my boy Vishal. It's like, oh, this is a dude named Nav. That's uh, <laughs> he's within the lab, <laughs> and yeah, so it's um it's a it's a super cool full circle. Moment. I love it, man. You got any more questions? Nah, that's it. Man. Are you sure? Yeah. I, I definitely want to like do it again because like I don't want to like grill you nonstop, but there's like a lot of stuff I feel like we could go back and forth on that actually would help people mm -hmm. watching. That's the whole point of me doing that, by the way. Yeah. Because I feel like people are seeing it and they want to learn or they want to know how to do it. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, it comes down to, like, I always tell G this too. Actually, let me ask you one more thing. Yeah. Do you believe in the power of the individual? Or do you know what that means? Mm, maybe not in this context. So, the, you know the creator economy, right? This, this this whole world we're living in where the YouTubers, Mr. Beast is taking okay, over. Yeah. The power of the individual is that the focus has shifted from Coca-Cola and all oh, these big right, brands right, right. to like Messi yeah, yeah. and Mr. Beast because like, and David Dobrik and all these guys like, yeah. you are now like that individual. Like, you actually have the power. Yeah. And like when I see amazing, of course I'm seeing all these stories and stuff, but like it's mainly you that I'm drawn to and many other people are going to be drawn to. The brand is also there, but like we want to see like, 
that's why it's cool like hearing your voiceovers yeah or seeing you in person or like when you hop on podcasts and stuff and i'm sure there's more content coming because i feel like that's where that relatability comes more because mm-hmm. same color skin yeah. young guy but how, do you agree with that like the power of the individual yeah so i would say the power of the individual if it, in the context of me not necessarily but yes as <laughs> soon a, though <laughs> as a as a way of media yes i, I know i think we've like learned about it we heard about it so much it's like you know before like if you want stories in media it's all through first of all it would be through newspaper right and those stories are told by certain people they're the they they get to decide who get who they get to interview they decide what quotes they put in those interviews and that's how it started and from there it changed you know online media came there's like you know there was podcasts but now like people can people don't you don't have to like to make it a college announcement or whatever, you don't have to do that through ESPN, right? You can do that through exactly. your, it's all changed your own platform, yep. right? So it's like anyone um, ha- can create their own content. They can, and obviously, you know, not everyone will be as successful, but they have the ability to tell their narrative as they want it. And I think, um, I think that's like, like, I like, I like try to like implement that as much as I can in Amazing. Not necessarily with myself, but with the athletes that we feature and giving right. them the opportunity to, exactly. you know, create the content that they want to. Because uh, I, I think there's so much power in that. And that, you know, their stories aren't being told and no one's giving them that platform yeah. to do so. Though. So they should, you know, be able to tell it in their authentic way. But, but yes, it's definitely the time of the individual. You can see like one person alone can, you know, create the change like so much. Like, you know, if you like... Think about like any, you know, up and coming Asian athlete that, you know, has the potential to do something great. They can, they can do that on their own by creating their own content and be able to yep. inspire millions by just yep. doing that. I think it's still, like, I don't know why I say this, but like, I believe in this so much. Like the, the people still don't understand like how powerful content, content is. Mm-hmm. Like good content, good storytelling, exactly what you're doing. Yeah. And it's only going to get bigger, bro. Like, I honestly feel like the next couple of years, like things are going to blow up even more. Yeah. And the people that are making content, like how we're making it, where it's high quality, it's good storytelling, there's a community behind it. Yeah. Like, we're going to the moon, like yeah. without a doubt. I tell that to the sponsors, right? Huh? I tell that to the sponsors. You know what's <laughs> funny, bro? We can talk about this offline, but like, we'll talk about that offline, actually. <laughs> but speaking of sponsors, I want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Nimbu Pani. <laughs> They're the official sports drink of India Rising. They've been literally fueling us all uh, training camp long. They're our main sponsor for India Rising and Brown Ballers. Without these guys, man, honestly, a lot of this stuff wouldn't be happening this year. So thank you guys so much. Mapster, Jen, Nimbupani. Literally, you got to try this after. It's actually fire. Have you ever had Nimbupani? I've not. It's I've basically not. like lemonade for brown people. Um, but they've added electrolytes. Yeah. They're taking out the sugar. So it, they're trying to make like a sports drink kind of like Gatorade. Yeah. But literally for, for brown ballers. Yeah. So shout out to yeah. Nimbupani. <laughs> Love you, bro. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> Thank you.